Hey, 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 it's W5HRO again with this uh, T368 exciter rack design. Uh, I decided to go ahead and show one more video here before I get the thing powered up because I kind of want to show the uh, my thought process and how I'm coming up with what I'm coming up with. Um, I, w I need to get the wattage down on the transmitter, right? So if I can eliminate, you know, rectifier tubes, if I don't have to heat up the filaments and so forth and so forth, and it's just, you know, every little thing like that will make it draw less uh, wattage from the uh, AC line, less current, so less watts. Um, what, I, what I got is I got this Hammond 710 transformer. It's just a plate transformer, nothing else. The current is way overkill for what I need, but that's fine. That's what I want. It's 750 volt center tap, which means it's over a thousand volts from end to end. If the center tap grounded at 750, it's going to run a little hot. If with 115 volts in, my line voltage here in Cameron Park, that's where I am. I'm in Cameron Park now, the new house in El Dorado County. We've only got like 15 some odd thousand people here. So the line voltage stays at like about 122 point something all the time. My old house in San Jose, you know, it's you got like a million people there, well over a million if you count all the illegal aliens. And it's like, you know, they have to run the line voltages up so high. So at the dips, you know, the, the sags during the whole, you know, evening hours and stuff when people come home from work and turn on their ACs. My line voltage there always ran like 140 something. Every so often you can see it just drop down to like 119 volts or something. It was just like, it would sag big time. So they always had to run the voltage up hotter to compensate, to compensate for the sag when people would come home and start turning stuff on, like the AC units in the summertime. But what I'm gonna do is, I gotta get the wattage down here on the transmitter. And I don't wanna use, like I said, the rectifier tubes or the, uh, anything that's gonna just draw extra current. So I decided I'm gonna use this transformer and I'm gonna get four you know, heat sinks. And I'm hoping I have enough room. This thing is gonna be crowded. I may not. This is the uh, the solid state DC relay for the uh, Keep Alive supply for the uh, three diode negative peak limiter. And I think I could just use this uh, old uh, uh, desk KW, you know, screen transformer. This used to power up two uh, 4-400s or 4-250s desk KW screen. It's like 125 mils or something. That should be enough for the uh, Keep Alive supply. So I, it's like 500 volts and it, it'll, it'll work fine. And I can just dial that down to like the 200 volts I need with the control unit. But, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use reg I'm going to make three regulated supplies from this. And I did get, get a hold of all the information and I do need the plus 150 volts that goes to the, uh, the PTO, these two tubes here, the oscillator and the buffer. And, uh, I'm going to regulate the filament, just the six volt filaments only on this, just on this guy. And you see what they've done is that the, the six volts gets powered up here, the other filaments on these other tubes here, these are three tubes. Then the, then the wires come back and they feed this connection, these connections down, down in here to go to the, uh, the unit here that come, all the power comes through the connector, through the wires here. So I'm just gonna just disconnect it where it comes here and I'm just gonna connect an independent regulated supply just to power up these two tubes here. Just a one amp, or one you know, amp and a half, you know, six volt regulator DC supply for the for the filament. So I'm going to have to have one more transformer just for that in here. It's going to get crowded. And what I've got here is uh, this is the uh, the filament transformer for the uh, the uh, six thousand tube, and it's a uh, twenty five volt center tap. Well, I went ahead and I just hooked the two outside secondary lines that, that'll be 25 volts across. And I hooked it up and I plugged the tube and I just took alligator clips. The thing came out to like 26.9 volts. So if I get all the alligator clips, it's probably going to run about 27 volts. It's going to run a little hot. So I'm going to boost What I figured, these things, these transformers, when you buy these things, the outputs always run a little hot because chances are your input voltage is hotter than 115 volts. So you're going to get more than like the 750, for example, on this one. 
So I should be able to regulate this down to the, uh, the 370, the uh, 275, and the, the plus 150, and I'll get to that here in a minute. But I should be able to use this one for the negative uh, a keep, uh, the, the, uh, the positive keepal I supply for the negative limiter, and it'll, that, that circuit will all be here, and then the wire will come from here to the, uh, the, the, the limiter to power it up. And when I, when I hit the PTT, when I transmit, this will come up, which will be the fastest thing that comes up in the whole transmitter because it's all solid state. It's gonna put, it'll put the voltage right there, right before the plate supplies fully come up. So that should be perfect. And uh, then I've got, uh, what I did is I found these two transformers. But like I said, this is for the, the 6,000 filament. And then this one, guess what? I calculated the current on these. And it comes up to like 1.3 some odd amps. I think it's 1.35 amps for the six volts for these three. Uh, these 6AH6 tubes draw a ton of filament current, and there's three of them. So it's like one point, was it 1.35 amps? Well, guess what I found? I found this little transformer, this little Hammond transformer, that uh, the, the secondary can be, it's got dual windings. And if you parallel them, it's 1.4 amps at six volts, so that should come out freaking perfect. And it'll probably run a little hot, you know, they always do. So, uh, and it's just 117 volts in on the primary, so with 122 point something, it'll run a little hotter than that. So that should be just right to power up these three tubes. So I'm gonna have a separate DC regulated supply to power up these two tubes in the oscillator. And then I'm gonna have this other transformer to power up these three tubes separately. Then I've got another this smaller separate one, like I said, for the 6,000 tube. So I, I've got to figure out how I'm gonna make all this stuff fit. I think what I need to do too is I've been, I think I rethought that. I thought I'd put a meter there for the, the negative keepal I supply, but once I get the voltage on that set, I'm never gonna mess with it anyway. But what I'm thinking is I should really have a plate current meter on this 6,000 tube. It probably wouldn't hurt. I'm, so I might put a meter there for just a plate current just so I can monitor it to make sure it's okay, right? I should have a, a, current, a current measurement somewhere on the, uh, the plate of that driver tube. So, But what I'm going to do is, like I said, I figured out I need the 150 regulated for this. And this is, all the supplies on this are going to be regulated. The, the way I'm going to do it, they have to be to get it down to where I need it. And then here's the, uh, the, thir uh, the, uh, uh, the, first, the first multiplier. You see the 275, what they've got on these T368s. And what they had was they had 275 volts going to the multiplier tubes and the multiplier screens and the 6000 screen. They used they had that pin on that connector like I said in my last video. They had pin 5 jumper was it pin 5 or pin 6. They had the yeah, I think it was 5 jumper to 12. And they were just using the the 275 volt supply that powers up this other stuff for the screen the 6000 tube. And it looks like in these later models, like I said, they separated that line to this screen by itself to connect it to something like a, its own separate supply or a variable supply. So it's, they, they changed it at one point, but it was designed originally for 275, and that screen was connected to the screens on this, too. It was all the same supply. So anyway, that's that one. And then, of course, uh, there's where it goes, the second multiplier. And then, can't my fingers, I need to wet my fingers or something. And then there it is again on the third multiplier. And then... You see the 370 volts, and that is that is 370 volts for the uh, the plate of the 6000 tube. So even though this is only 750 volt center tap, it, the, see how high the current is, and it's only 115 volts. Well, with 122 volts into it AC on the primary, and the load's going to be light on this thing. It's you know I'm going to have I should be able to power up uh, two two zeners in series. You know, a 75 volt, a 70 volt zener and a 200 volt zener in series to the base of an NPN pass transistor. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mount four separate small heat sinks for a T03 package. I wish I could just mount them on heat, small heat sinks to where they'd be grounded to the, the relay rack panel of the shelf itself. But the problem is the collector on those transistors are always 
the case is always, you know, the collector. So it's they're going to be hot. So I'm going to have to isolate the heat sinks from ground just to be safe. You got to you, know, you can use those mica spacers, those insulators between the T03 package and the heat sinks and the mount, which is what I'm going to do also anyway. But that's not, you know, if they if those things ever short across, then you short out the the you know the high voltage on the supply, and that's not good. So I'd have to I have to uh, isolate the heat sinks. So I'm going to lose a little bit of power, you know, heat, uh, heat dissipation. So that's why I've got to think about this. I got to figure it out. But I can use four pass transistors. I can use four high current, high voltage NPN transistors mounted on heat sinks. I can just take a little piece of uh, perf board or something and just insulate, just ins mount, mount the heat sinks and the transistors on that, and then use you know standoffs from the the the, the perf board down to the to this to the relay rack shelf to insulate it from ground i could probably do that and make it work fine but what i can do is i can just use small five watt zeners in series you know uh with the resistor in series to the bases of all the transistors right so i'm going to have one that'll regulate this guy down to you know this supply down to 370 volts for the 6000 screen i mean the plate and then I'll have the 275 volts via another pass transistor. Then I'll have the 150 volts regulated, you know, via another pass transistor. Then the fourth tra pass transistor will be at 275 again with a variable resistor across two zeners to control the screen voltage. And that pot will be up in the, uh, up on the, the RF, the RF rack via that empty, empty hole I have where I took out that variable tuning cap for the, uh, the old input tuning circuit. So that's what I'm looking at here. I'm trying to figure out how to arrange this stuff. And right now I've got to get some heat sinks first and decide what transistors I'm going to use. But I'm just going to regulate. This thing is well big enough to power up this whole damn thing. I could probably even power up the keep alive supply for the negative peak limiter. But I'm thinking as the negative peak goes down, if it disrupts the voltage in any way, coming out of this thing on the, on the exciter, then the voltage might dip somewhere on here. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that or not. I, th I think it'd be better to have it a separate supply, but I still haven't decided yet. I could, uh, I could add one more pass transistor on this and just control the, the voltage on that too. I haven't decided yet. And I could eliminate this guy because this is big enough to do everything. And that's kind of what I was thinking, but I'm, I'm thinking it might be safe to keep keep this the supply for the keep alive separate on a separate transformer but if i decide that i've got to have the room on the shelf to mount then i'm going to have to eliminate this guy and i'll just go ahead and try that if i if i regulate the supplies well enough to where they don't move even when the negative peak goes down through this guy then i think i'm going to be okay it might work fine if i just run enough current through the zeners but i'm trying to use minimal current in the zeners to keep it stable so, uh, by the way, this was a chore getting back in there. What I've got now is I just put some of this, this, this masking, painter's masking tape around the edges because I'm drilling holes. I don't want the metal shavings to get up underneath this thing because they will. There's a gap. These things are not easy. I had to, of course, I took this thing out to check it and clean everything up. And, uh, boy, you have to... To be able, you have to go back and adjust those screws because once you put it back together, it was binding. And I'm like, oh my God. So I had to loosen these screws here and I had to kind of move it around till I finally got it in the right position to where it stopped doing that. And now that this the spinner knob spins freely, it's fine. But it, I, I guess, you know, I, I'm sure other people that have worked on these things have noticed the same thing. These gears, man, oh God. You take this thing out, it takes you a while to move it around and get it. So the gears don't bind on you. It's a pain in the butt, but yeah, hey, they, they work good. These PTOs are extremely stable, especially since I'm going to regulate the, uh, the, the the filaments on this both tubes in this thing. That's one more thing. See, I need one more supply to power that guy up. So uh, for the for the the regulated six volts for those tubes. So I gotta have some more room. So. Uh, I can put the control pot for the circuit to control the voltage out of this guy. Because like, like I said, once I get that set, I'm not going to have to ever bother it again. I'll just set it and be done with it. I don't have to move it around. I just need to make sure the negative peak doesn't go down more than 90%. That's all I need to make sure of. 
So the new secondary baseline being generated that's going to go through here will take care of that so it doesn't turn the tube off when you modulate. So that's all I have for now. I just kind of want to show you what I'm what I'm going through here. I'm just I'm, I'm brainstorming here and I drew up a schematic on my uh on my LT Spice again uh, for the supply and I'm coming up with an, uh, how how I'm going to do it. I'm just trying to figure it out and I'm just kind of mulling everything over trying to determine exactly how I want to do it. So that's why I'm laying everything out now, but this transformer is going to be perfect. These things are cheap too. This wasn't very much. It was less than 75 bucks. It's not, you know, for this project, this is going to last me the rest of my life. So I want to make sure that, hey, it's big enough. It's never probably ever going to go bad. I just got to make sure I set up the pass transistors and the, uh, and the uh, uh, heat sinks up properly so those things stay cool. What I might have to do is the first pass, pass transistor to get the 370 volts regulated, I might have to parallel two pass transistors just for the hell of it. Although the ones I'm going to find, if I find high enough current ones, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I can probably get away with using one. Then, they'll, then they're going to be cascaded in series is how they're going to work. But that's all I have for now. I'll, uh, like I said, once I get this thing, the holes drilled and I finally get some stuff powered up where I've got some stuff like the, the filaments lit up and so forth, I'll, uh, I'll do another video. So this is W5HRO. One last thing I forgot to mention is uh, I'm adding this to the existing video. Uh, the, I do need the minus 55 volts. It's for the grid blocking for all the all the multiplier tubes. And it does also go to the uh, the grid of the uh, 6,000 tube. So I do need that 55 volts. So there is one more supply, and that's what I'm saying. I could do. I could probably add a second set of diodes from that plate transformer and do the reverse, and I could maybe generate it from there. I'm not sure I want to do that, but I'll, that's something I'll have to look at too. But I do need minus 55 volts for this thing as well. So this is W5HRO.